was just one thing, the virtue of attracting small bodies when being rubbed. Um, and Dufay came up with the idea, we have to revise that very concept, we have to speak of two electricities. And then, and the basic, the basic uh, mo motive behind that was, um, then, uh, then and only then we can formulate a law for uh, electric attraction and repulsion. <laughs> Okay, these are three cases, or, uh, or four, ca four cases I've presented now that have been elaborated in some details. Uh, there are many more. I give you a, just, just uh, a list. Uh, again, I won't discuss that list. This is just for illustration. Exploratory experimentation can be found in many uh, sciences, in many periods, um, and uh, Often, and this is my, my, nose, my note of importance at the end, often, not necessarily, but often this type of exploration um, results in revising uh, the, the basic concepts of a field or creating at least new concepts. <coughs> this, uh, of course, th so this might serve you to, to give you an idea what uh, what this debate is about and actually since 97 when the concept was first proposed there, there was a quite lively discussion and it's ongoing <coughs> um, and it, it has been enriched very much uh, to, to the point that um, even in, in our day's research uh, we find lots of exp exploratory experimentation often um, scientists with whom I discussed it, okay, that's always the past. Um, nowadays we are, we are no longer in that position. That's not true. Always in fields where you have a basic uncertainty, where theory doesn't really guide you very clearly, uh, we, have, we find uh, exploratory types of experimentation. Um, for example, in, uh, and, and many, many people have, have done studies for that, um, in the life sciences, uh, in gene expression, in nanotoxicology, uh, there are uh, decent studies on that, but also in high energy physics where you have lots of data and don't exactly, not, not, do not always know what to do then. And another physical field would be high temperature superconductivity. That's quite an interesting field because it's so much, it was, it is so utmost technical interest. And at the same time, at this point, and physicists, physicists are quite free about that, we don't have a real theory about how that comes about, how high, high temperature superconductivity works. And once you look at the type of experimentation people pursue, and I have often discussed with physicists, um, they, it fits quite nicely that um, that that's, uh, general scheme of exploratory experimentation. Of course, one must say the, 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 it has been refined. The, the scheme I have showed you at the beginning uh, is not enough. When, uh, there, there, are, there are more um, if you look at, for example, this experiments on gene expression, you have to, uh, some specifications look a little bit different. But, um, okay, this, uh, I won't, this just might illustrate that there is an ongoing interest in that um, type of experimental research. We have learned something new. And this brings me to my last point. There is a question then coming up, a historical question. If, it, if it's true that this type of experimentation was so much present and is so much, is, is so much present and has been so much present over centuries and over different areas, how could it be that it escaped so much the attention of reflective people? So this brings me back to the history of reflection of experiment. And once I had done and uh, this, uh, this um, work on exploratory experimentation, uh, experimentation, I started looking and, and wondering, isn't it that bright, clever, reflective people would have spoken about that even in earlier times? Um, I went back to the 17th century. Um, okay, this is my fourth and last chapter. Um, and again, uh, had a look at those people who spoke about 
the uses of experiment in the 17th century. <coughs> And of course, as I had mentioned, and now this is a more refined picture than I had given in the beginning, um, uh, we see many people, many, many uh, reflective people talking about non-testing uses of experiments. Of course, we had the experiments as test is present from early on, uh, for in Bacon and Galileo, but at least Bacon has also other uses. Boyle has very, um, definitely speaks about um, uh, experiments as or to, to does these experimental histories as collections. This is not, not really exploratory experiment, but at least it's sort of a bottom-up approach. Uh, Mariotte has a quite interesting uh, and not yet really understood idea of experiments as a means of establishing this what he calls principe d'experience which sometimes, and perhaps with good reasons, has been identified as laws of nature. And uh, with Mariotte, it would be still a task of further research to see how he spelled out that idea. <clears throat> and even Newton, who is famous for testing experiments, gave at least experiments the role of stimulators for hypotheses, as can easily be seen. <clears throat> so we have some ideas uh, in the 17th century. Going to the 18th century uh, doesn't bring too much new insights, for the, uh, or at least on, on first sight. Of course, we have, uh, um, we have a tradition of experimental histories, Boerhaave, Muschenbrock, Priestley, and others. And of course, we have very much uh, present experiments as a mean of establishing, of establishing laws in very different fields, as you see, and uh, um, heat theory and whatever, uh, we, we, we can see it. <clears throat> but we, at least so our present day view, we don't have many ref reflections on that. And this is a pity. And I was wondering, is this really true? Because there were clever people in the 18th century with a, with a, pro a sharp look on what's going on in their sciences. One of the most clever ones, and uh, this is in my last part now, I will just to give some ideas, which I, uh, and I, I'm happy to, to have your input. Um, but these ideas indicate, and these, these very tiny findings indicate, there must be more to say about that. One of the most clever people to look at the sciences of his time was, of course, the one most responsible for the Encyclopédie in France, namely uh, D'Alembert. D'Alembert, uh, looking at D'Alembert uh, and whether he spoke about experiment, he reflected upon experiment, we, we find something. Both in his Discours Preliminaire, he speaks about experiments, and plus he has a full article in his Encyclopédie labeled Experimental. Mm. Uh, I, I have still a hard time to understand that title, uh, but um, at least uh, he gives, this is, he talks about experiments. <laughs> and it's most interesting to see what he does. First, D'Alembert makes a very sharp difference between two types of sciences. And I'm hesitant to, to say all this because we have, we have people in the room who know much more about D'Alembert than I do. Um, on the one hand, he speaks about the science physico-mathematique. And what he has in mind, of course, is uh, um, mechanique, uh, mecha what we call rational mechanics, uh, hydro, uh, hydrostatics, hydrodynamics, etc. Think, of course, he himself did quite a lot of work in those fields, and others like the Bernoullis did also. This was he, what he called as the science physico-mathematique. And he had a very clear idea What's the function of experiment in these mathematical, physical sciences? Um, you see, uh, perhaps we read it. Le seul utilité véritable que puisse procurer. Oh, no, I don't read it in French. I think it's a, it's a nuisance for you. You should read it yourself. Um, um, but what we see here, what he spells out, is a very clear idea. The mathematical, the mathematical physicists makes a theory, and then he puts the theory on test, on, on experimental test, and if the experimental test makes a difference to the theory, this leads us 
to refining our theory, for example, by including effects of friction and other causes, <coughs> or uh, air friction, etc. So this follows, this very nicely fits to the idea of experiment we have already in Newton and we have in, in some way in Karl Popper. <coughs> But this is uh, just for the uh, physico, science physico mathematique. Uh, D'Alembert also has the idea that, that, that there is another branch of sciences, namely the physique experimentale. And probably he has in mind uh, people like Nollet about him, uh, people so work on electricity, on magnetism, on, um, pneu on pneumatics, etc. These were the fields of experimental physics in his time. <coughs> and there, he has a very different idea what experiment can do. Perhaps I try to, re you see I highlighted some, some points. C'est d'amasser le plus d'effets qu'il nous est possible, de les disposer dans l'ordre le plus naturel, de les rappeler à un certain nombre de faits principaux, de faits principaux, dont les autres ne soient, ne soient que des conséquences. <coughs> Um, and in the second quote, of course, this is a discours preliminaire et ex, uh, expérimental. Ce sont, ce sont là les faits que le physicien doit surtout ch chercher à bien connaître. Ils ne, seront trop, ils ne seront pas trop les multiplier. Again, we have multiplying of experiment. Plus il n'aura recueilli, plus il sera près de voir l'union. Son objet doit être de mettre l'ordre dont ils seront susceptibles d'expliquer le, les uns là par les autres en tant que cela euh, possible et de former, pour ainsi dire, une chaîne où il se trouve les moins des lacunes que faire se pourra. <coughs> This is, in a way, quite uh, striking. What does he say? Uh, Explicate, explain one fact by another, multiply experiments, and form a chain of phenomena or of facts. I will come back to that. Uh, before I come back to that, let me point out that we find quite similar um, uh, uh, ideas in his companion, in the Encyclopédie Compagnon Diderot, uh, in, uh, in his Pensée sur l'interprétation de, de la nature, uh, which is, of course, some, some counterpart to the, to the discours preliminaire. But uh, I think this fits very nicely, what we see here fits very nicely to what we find in D'Alembert. <coughs> Um, again, I won't, uh, I, won't, uh, I won't read this uh, in detail, but again you see talking of making a chain of phenomena um, and in, in the last quote of reduced phenomena to each uh, or effects to each other. <coughs> Let me summarize uh, the, the keywords we find here. <coughs> uh, some keywords, um, of course, um, is multiplying effects, multiplier, what does that mean? And the, the, at least in both uh, cases we find the idea isolated single experiments don't say anything. You need a multitude of them. And a connected multitude, you need to multiply an experiment. You need to identify general facts. facts. And this is then, I, uh, I, I say, they could be lost and reduce all other effects to those and you could form a chain, you should form a chain um, without missing links. Regret, uh, regrettably enough, the texts do not explain what is meant by those things. What does multiply experiments mean? What procedure is envisaged? What would be the advice to give an experimenter to do that? What does it mean to reduce a fact to a general fact? What does it mean to form a chain? What would a missing link in this chain how could that be made out? These are questions that remain open in these texts and actually I must confess I haven't systematically researched D'Alembert whether, whether there are other texts where we find answers to that or <coughs> not Diderot. Um, so um, perhaps some, some D'Alembert specialists could help me further here. But um, this is one, one question that has to pursue. The other question that could be and should be pursued is um, of course, 
what is their what is their reference point? Both of them were certainly not experimenters themselves, but what are bo most of them, both of them were very acute observers of the sciences of their time. So what could they have in mind? <coughs> And again, on the danger, this is a, a risky conjecture, and it, uh, it's, it's really just a conjecture and a, a working hypothesis uh, that has to be stabilized. I found, uh, I went back to my Dufay case. And uh, again, strikingly enough, you find in Dufay interesting um, some methodological remarks, only some. And what you see, uh, this, these are remarks Dufay gave at the end of his presentation of, um, of his electric findings. Um, voilà le principe, ou si l'on veut, le fin simple et primitif, auquel se peuvent réduire toutes les expériences sur l'électricité qui sont connues. That's very striking, and the, 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 the resemblance is very striking. Again, we have simple facts, or uh, primitive facts, to which all others should be reduced. <laughs> um, and du Dufay has a, another very, very nice quote and a very clear quote. <clears throat> uh, C'est été tenté une chose impossible que d'en recherche, rechercher la cause avant d'avoir découvert la quantité des phénomènes dont nous avons rendu compte. Uh, Qu'il a été. Uh, 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 um, et nous avons vu qu'ils. Qu qu'ils dé, ah, dérivent tous d'une petite nombre de principes simples et, et invariables. And Dufay was very clear. First, we have to discover these simple facts or simple principles, and then we can, can go to the research of causes, which he, which he thought, uh, and this would be discover the tourbillon or whatever you have. But first, you have to, to find these simple facts. This is a very clear statement, and if we take for a moment that the first research practice would resemble to these methodological um, ideas, we would have an explication in the Dufay case what he means by those. For example, the law of two electricities <coughs> would be such a simple case by which all others, and uh, actually in, in, in this uh, paper he says, all other effects of electric attraction and repulsion could be reduced to the, the law of attraction and repulsion. <laughs> um, in, I, I bring this quote of Réaumur. Réaumur was in close contact with Dufay, and what we find at least in, du, in Réaumur, what, what we find at least in du, Réaumur is one point that resembles to D'Alembert, uh, but this might be just commonplace, have been commonplace in the time. Um, the uh, differentiation between two very different types of experimentation. One, um, experimentation uh, that you, you do um, once you have already uh, you, you après coup, uh, what he says, uh, you have already your theory and you, you try to do the experiment afterwards, or what he mentions first, you do experiments to, uh, from which you try to draw a theory. <coughs> so very uh, very different types of experiment. Again, a similar stance we, f we see later in D'Alembert, uh, or roughly at the same time. <coughs> as you see, uh, and as I announced, I have to leave it at that point. I haven't good answers for that. But what I wanted to show to you is that there is a quite field, so in the, in the history of reflection of experiment, a quite uh, lots to be done. We have to, uh, the 18th century, and in particular, physical or uh, experimental science in 18th century France might offer quite a rich resource to understand, uh, to, to, to learn much more about reflections people did on experimental approaches, um, and this could help us to understand um, both the the philosophy of experiment much better, and uh, the historiography to set straight the probably quite biased and weird historical picture we have of the history of thinking of experiments. With this state of uh, and call for assistance, I, st I end my talk, and merci beaucoup pour l'attention.
Est-ce qu'il y a des questions commentaires dans le tournoi de salle Thank you for your talk. Uh, there was a conception of an uh, experiment which was uh, given by uh, Hans uh, Reichenbach, mm -hmm. which was related to um, uh, induction, but it was much more refined because uh, experiments were a way to do a kind of variation uh, revision of uh, beliefs. And uh, this idea was completely destroyed by uh, Popper and others uh -huh. later. Uh, but then it seemed that uh, in what you call um, exploratory experiments, where you, you collect data and let the hypothesis uh, come out of the data, and sometimes using uh, machine learning algorithms to process the data you have accumulated, it seemed that this uh, very uh, conception of uh, Reichenbach is, uh, is coming back. So do, do you share this analysis, or do, do you think it, it, it was good okay. to destroy it forever? <laughs> Mm. I must confess, uh, thank, thanks quite a lot for this hint. I must confess I don't know this account. Probably it has been so much dismissed that I, did, uh, I, I don't know that. I would be m very much interested to see it. Of course, what we know from Reichenbach is quite a different thing. The, namely, Reichenbach made up this, um, uh, this distinction between context of discovery and context of justification. And this was rather unhappy for the philosophy of experiment because it said, okay, uh, in the context of discovery, of course, experiment can do whatever it is, whatever you, you might do. You can, um, but this is not, this leads to discovery, and discovery cannot be analyzed in, in strict epistemological points. So philosophers don't need to care about that context. The part philosophers need to care about is for context of justification, and of course, by definition, experiment is just a testing device here. So this is the part of Reichenbach I know, but uh, I'm very happy. I will come. I will come back to you and ask you for the reference to see another Reichenbach. Uh, this would, in some way, support my suspicion that we have just blind spots in our historiography of the thinking of experiments. Thanks a lot. Uh, we might, uh, um, je suis prêt de, de t'accepter des, des questions en français, bien sûr. Okay, you want, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for your talk, which was very, uh, very interesting and clear. I'm a student of mathematics, so uh, okay. it was, I'm, I'm familiar with some of the names you, you mentioned, but not, uh, all of, with, not with all of the research you mentioned. Um, I'm tempted to make a relationship between what you have explained in your uh, second point about uh, this, uh, this term to a new kind of experimentalism, uh, with, which you presented both as a, a, a term to uh, research on experimental practice and also a term to a kind of complexity, because you explained mm -hmm. that uh, people were ready in the 1980s to take into account many different aspects to